In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint details on the Terminator Captain like the cape, head and power sword. Welcome to Tilt Already, my name is Michael and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint the Space Marine Terminator Captain. I'll link any brushes and paints I use in the tutorial in the description below as well as putting them on the screen when I use them. And if you enjoy the content here on Tabletop Ready, let me know in the comments and I'd really appreciate you taking the time to like the video as well. It really does help grow the channel and get out to more people. I've already created an in-depth tutorial showing you how to paint Space Marine Terminators, so I do recommend also watching that tutorial which goes into more detail about all the steps and techniques that I'll be using here as well. So in this tutorial, because our captain shares a lot of the same features and details as Space Marine Terminators, which I've already done a full tutorial on, I'm just going to be showing you how to paint all the other things on our captain that I haven't covered yet. I built the captain in sub-assemblies to make painting easier and used McCrack Blue Spray to undercoat. And to make this tutorial easier to follow along with, I've split the tutorial up into different chapters. Using the main Terminator painting tutorial, you'll be able to get the armour, weapons, and a lot of the other details finished. So make sure to follow that tutorial first as this tutorial is for all the details you'll need to finish your Terminator Captain. The first thing I want to do is to see how we can make our parchment a bit more interesting. So rather than just having text, we can use some of the smaller transfers on the transfer sheet. Just applying them simply with water is enough. You can cover the parchment with Lamy Medium to protect them and give everything the same finish. When you're done with making parchment fancier, we can get any scrolling detailing on the armour painted using Zandri Dust. Next apply some Reichland Flesh Shade to help create interest and definition. Once that's dried, layer with the Ushabti Bone to lighten the more raised areas and details. Finish with an edge highlight using Pallid Witch Flesh. Now we've finished the smaller details, I want to show you how we can paint and add those colourful markings that you see to the armour. A lot of the markings you see involve painting a checkered pattern design, so let's start with the lighter colour first which is Corax White, and paint this in the areas we want our markings. Next we want to mark out any design or grid using the darker second colour. When you're happy with how everything looks, spend some time filling out those areas with your chosen colour. Don't worry if everything's looking a bit messy, once you're done with painting in all the colours, you can spend some time neatening everything up. Just like we did with the parchment, we can use some of those smaller transfers from the sheet to add interest and iconography to the armour as well. Pick some transfer designs you think would work well and apply them where you want them. As well as transfers, we can also rough in some small designs ourselves and when you're happy with how they look, spend some time finalising them. Let's add further interest painting scratches and scuffs. Don't overdo it and build it up slowly until you're happy with how everything looks. Finish these areas recess shading around white areas using Fenris in grey or Galvor back red for any red areas. Highlighting these areas using White Scar and Troll Slayer Orange. To finish our markings we can use some Lamy Medium to help the transfers look painted on. I now want to show you how we can finish those metal details as well as finishing his sword. We've already got most of the weapons and metal details painted but we still need to get these metal guards on his shoulders painted. For these metal guards on his shoulders, I want to paint them as brass, so let's start with Canoptec Alloy for our base colour. Now we want to apply some Xerophon Sapia on these details to create our definition. Finish our brass guards using Stormhouse Silver for an edge highlight. To finish the sword, let's start with a handle, painting the ridges with Screamer Pink. Now we want to darken those recessed areas with some Abaddon Black. Then highlight the ridges with Pink Horror. We can give the sword's blade more impact, painting an energy effect around the power node. 
start with some temple guard blue, painting the node as well as the area around it. When you're done, we can use some athematic blue to add a glow effect to the area. Now we're going to paint the node and a thin line around it using Baharoth blue. Finish our energy effect using blue horror to highlight and again around the node but more towards the top. When painting characters it's always worth spending that little bit of extra time painting those cool effects and details across the miniature to help them really stand out in your army. I now want to show you how to paint his cloak and how to get his head painted. Let's get his cloak painted, starting with the inside of it using Corax White. Next we're going to use an administratum grey glaze in the shallow areas and folds where we expect things to be darker. We can smooth the transitions with the Corax White glaze. Because the inside is white, it's not going to stay very clean for very long so we can dirty things up along the bottom of the edge of the cloak using a Carrick Stone Glaze and then a Bane Blade Brown Glaze along the very edge. Finish the inside of the cloak with an edge highlight using White Scar. For the outside of the cloak we want to start with some Mephiston Red making sure to work to that solid colour which we can work with. When you're done with the base colour, we can use a corn red glaze to darken the more shallower areas of the material, using a Mephiston red glaze to smooth things out. Continue with the Galvorback red glaze to darken the deeper folds. Now we're done with darkening those shallow and recessed areas, we can now work on lightening the raised areas and folds. Starting with a chunky highlight using Evelson Scarlet, painting this on all the raised folds as well as along the edge of the cloak as well. At the same time to give the impression this is made of material, we can use that Evelson Scarlet to paint little lines and cross hatches along the highlight to create texture. Let's finish our cloak painting a finer highlight using Wild Ride Red. Again we can create texture along those highlights but not as heavy this time. To paint the cloak you'll notice I kept the back of the Terminator armour separate to make painting it easier. Now you don't have to do this, but just be careful when painting the inside area of the cloak. We now want to spend some time painting the captain's head, starting with Bugman's glow for our base colour. Now we want to work on creating definition to bring out all those details and features. So let's first use some Night Quest of Flesh and the recessed features and details where we expect shadow. We can then use some Blood Reaver Flesh for those deeper areas of the skin, including the mouth and eyes. Neaten things up if you need to using a Bugman's Glow Glaze. Let's now work on highlighting the raised areas with the Cadian Flesh Glaze. And then continue to bring out the features using a Kislev Flesh Glaze. So we're using glazes because it helps us achieve a more natural looking skin. Finish the skin using an equal mix of Kislev Flesh and your Shabti Bone for a spot highlight. For the eyes we can use some white scar, being very careful to paint this into the sockets. And then a bad and black for the pupils. And we want to make sure we meet the top and bottom of the eye. To paint the hair we first want to use some Shabti Bone for the base colour and then we can use Pallid Witch Flesh to highlight. Pallid Witch Flesh can also be used to paint the teeth. So with the head finished, the only thing left to do is to paint the base. Let's start with the rubble and rocky details using Mornfang Brown. And when that's done, we can apply a wash of Norn Oil all over. Next we want to do a heavy dry brush using Dawnstone. Then finish the rocky details with a lighter dry brush of Yushabti Bone. So for the Tyranid, we are going to paint this in a much simpler way than we normally would, so it doesn't detract from the captain. Starting with the flesh of the Tyranid, let's use Yushabti Bone to start with. And to get those pink tones in the flesh, we can thin down some Volupus Pink Contrast with an equal amount of Lamy Medium 
and apply this all over the flesh making sure to let it fully dry before doing anything else. And when that's dry we can use your shafty bone again to lighten things up. For the carapace start with Nagarov Nightshade for our base colour. We then want to paint a chunky highlight using Zeorius Purple. To finish the carapace we can use Demonet Hide as an edge highlight. Along with the Terminators, the Captain was a lot of fun to paint and I really enjoyed the opportunity to paint more interesting things like the cloak, the markings and even the base. So let's see how he turned out. Our Terminator Captain is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel including how to paint some of the other Space Marine chapters. I do want to say a massive thank you to my current supporters who've made this tutorial possible, thank you. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful, make sure to let me know in the comments and leave a like. Make sure to subscribe to Tabletop Ready if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.